Okay, so today we are doing a leak test on this unit. Um, so a little bit of backstory. I didn't put the quote in to do this one, so apparently it's running low on gas on stage one, I think it is. I'll have to double check that. Um, and in typical fashion, <clears throat> the quote was sitting there for months and months and months until it was uh, 38 degrees, I think a couple of days ago. And then they were scrambling to get us out here because it was <laughs> obviously really hot in the space. So depending on how today goes, I'm basically just gonna try and find the leak if it's in a repairable location. Um, we might try and fix it today. Um, it, it, it really all depends on where it is, how quickly I find it. And because I have got the stuff here to, repla uh, to repair it if we, if we need to, but we'll jump into leak testing first and we'll see if we can find this old York unit. Um, can see here R22 4.9 kilos per stage so yeah um, I did notice before that when I rocked up <clears throat> the unit was actually already off so I've got to look into that because as far as I was aware um, on the job notes like I said I wasn't the one who came here and diagnosed this originally um, but I was unaware that this unit wasn't going to be running at least one stage so yeah we'll have to have to look into that just while doing a visual, um, I've noticed that belt sitting here, so maybe that has something to do with why it was isolated. Yeah, I've really got to look up the previous history on this because I'm really not sure what's going on here. So I was doing a visual and I really couldn't see any kind of like obvious signs of oil, although I can't really get to the bends, um, so I might have to pop the fucking roof off. I don't know, we'll see how we go. Either way, I put gauges on to see what the pressures were and we're actually in a vacuum, so. I'm gonna jack this thing up with nitro and see if we can hear anything. Just pumped it up to 1200. Gonna start a pressure test and while we're doing that, taking that cover off, the side one off to give access to the side of the condenser coil here and one side of the vat. Look how many screws. <laughs> just to get that and that off as well. Um, but I don't know how I'm gonna get access to the other side of the evaporator because you've obviously got your, your ducts coming off here and the other side's basically sitting right there. So unless I'm gonna take the roof off, but even that's only gonna give me access to the top, yeah, I don't know. So this is, this here down is stage one of my coil. My, uh, yeah, stage one or part one of my coil. Um, again, just doing a visual, but still no signs of oil. I'm looking for, you know, evidence of oil. Oh, where are we? There we go. Looking for evidence of oil. Usually if you've got a big leak, you'll see like oil stains here, are like in your insulation, but at the moment I've got nothing. So pressure test is actually looking pretty good so far. And honestly, the we're still going to do a visual over the rest of the, well, as much of the coils as I can get to. But really, the only place I was seeing oil were my Schraders. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but that's kind of all I got at the moment. Um, yeah, we'll keep looking. So, I found it. There's a leak. You can hear that right at the stem there. Um, I'm going to... Uh, keep doing a visual. Um, I'm gonna have a look down here and see if anything stands out. If it does, I'll take that off, but I'll keep having a look at the other side of that coil as well um, to see if I can find, I can't get access to that side there. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm fairly confident that uh, that's our main issue. Um, I'll probably, I'll replace the Schrader gauze as well. Um, but yeah, we'll just do a visual just to really confirm that we've, we've, we've found it and then we'll, we'll call the owner and see if they want us to go ahead with the repair. So, spoke to the customer, they've decided to go ahead with their replacement today. Um, spoke to Actrol, they don't have a like-for-like -like replacement. Um, this is a Danfoss uh, 28 kilowatt valve. Um, they do have an Emerson one, it's got slightly different inlet and outlets, but we, yeah, we'll be able to make it work. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, basically, I've got someone else going to get the parts now, so we're gonna pick up dryer, reducers, the valve, um, all that kind of stuff. They've gone off to actually to pick it up now. Um, while they're gone, I'm just gonna get this ready, get the old valve out, get the dryer out. So when they come back, it's get it all in, get it on back and get up and running.
old TXV's out now. Um, I'm just gonna leave the dryer just for the time being um, until the, yeah, until basically comes back. Just, you know, limit how many things I got open. Not that it really makes that much of a difference. Um, I've also taken the Schrader cores out. Uh, we're gonna replace those while we've got the system open. Um, yeah, uh, other guy's on his way back now, so should have this in shortly. Have our new valve, so I'll start getting the prep work done. is in position, um, hook up the nitro and we'll get welding this thing in. So slight hiccup, um, <laughs> bloody act troll uh, gave us the wrong filter dryer. Um, I should have told the guy going there to double check, I've, you know, mistakes happen but it, yeah, anyway, mistakes happen. Um, they sent us the correct size dryer but with the rotor lock fitting connections uh, instead of the solder. So, They've gone back there to do that, so I'm going to try and get these welds done. So by the time he comes back, we can just get that in, get it on pressure and get it on back. Right, TXV's in, again, not the prettiest worlds, but just doing a, just a purge. Um, but yeah, hopefully they dry will be back soon. While we're waiting, I'm just cleaning up the pipe to strap the bulb to. All right, got that strapped in there, and I'll run this line a bit nicer. Okay, dryer's here, we'll get this in. So, those welds are done. Uh, we're getting nitro into the system now. Get it under press test. Just started the tightness test now. So, been running for 15 minutes now, dropped one KPA. I'm happy, we'll get this thing on back. So, been running for about 15 minutes now. It's coming down pretty quick. Um, I mean, really, it's not like it's a two stage system that's completely separate, uh, separate from each other. It's not that big. Um, but yeah, coming down pretty quick. I'm gonna go ahead and do a nitrogen sweep. Let that run for a little bit, might grab something to eat. All right, vacuum's been running for half an hour now, pulled down pretty low. We will let this sit for five or 10 to see if that rises and go from there. All right, uh, there we go. All right, zero it out. Sweet, all right, system charge. 4.9 kilos. We're going to charge through the discharge line. Hopefully, it'll take the full charge and the one go. Go for it. Almost made it. We'll charge the rest through the suction line. Okay, compressor's just kicked on now. Pressures are going to stabilize. We'll monitor them from the rest of the wall. So, we've been running for about 10 minutes now. Might make a little adjustment on the TXV. I do have a clear sight glass, so everything's looking pretty good at the moment, but yeah, make a slight adjustment. Yeah, that'd be good. Let it there and we'll let it settle for a bit.
So unit's actually satisfied now, um, which is awesome. Yeah, my pressures were looking a lot better. So suction's a little low, um, but again, it's not a crazy hot day today. I'll, I'll get the, the tempo about. Um, so I'm not too stressed about it. Uh, my superheat was was hovering around that like um, uh, six and a half or like five and a half to eight or whatever. Um, but again, I'm not too stressed because the bulb is actually located on the outside. So it's more reading compressor superheat than evaporator superheat. So I'm happy for it to be a little bit higher. Um, but last thing I'm gonna do, lead test. Now all it's left to do is get my uh, Schroeder core back into there. Um, annoyingly, I thought I had some 5.8 insulation in the car. Turns out I do not. So look, I'm not too stressed about it just being that section there that's not covered anymore. Um, I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference. But yeah, we'll get the Schroeder core in here, pack up and get out of here.